7 and 8, beginning at verse number 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abram, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, go with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. All right, verse 6. We covered that a little bit last week, but just sort of review. Who is Sarah? Let's see if you have a comment. Give your raise your hand. We'll call your hand. Yes, Pastor Dan. She's the mother of Isaac. Mother of Isaac and wife of Abraham. Abraham. All right. And uh, what do we call Abraham? What, is, what are the ones that we refer to Abraham as for? Yes, yes. I mean, Pam. Um, a patriarch. All right, a patriarch. Yes, Bob. Is the father of the faithful. Father of the faithful, my son. So Abraham and Sarah. Uh, Sarah obeyed Abraham. Uh, at what time should wives obey their husbands? Barbara? In the Lord. In the Lord. Any other comments on that? At what time, huh? The rule is always. What time should I? Yes, uh, Anna, Anna. No, no, Anna, go ahead. If he tells you to shoot somebody, should you obey your husband? What? No. If he tells you to kill somebody? If the person has a gun and is trying to kill you and your husband and your kids, Maybe it depends on the context, but but you should you should do something. You you, you should own, you should not obey your husband when he tells you to do something that is unscriptural. Unscriptural. Who should you obey, God or man? God. God. That's very clear in the Book of Acts. It have to be God or the man. What did the Roman officials tell the disciples to do or not to do? Any hands on that? What did the Roman officials tell the disciples do, to do or not to do? Yes, Tammy. Not to speak anymore in that name. <coughs> That's right. Referring to Christ. Referring to Christ. And uh, <coughs> what did they do after they were commanded? Yes, Pat, Tammy and then Vaughn. Well, they said we cannot but speak of the things that we see and hear. That's good, Vaughn. As far as obeying the husband. We're, we're back on this first spurt, too. Then go ahead. I know, but... I think the rule is that to obey. And maybe some, and in, in the same manner, and, and this is why it's so important to know that yes. in First Peter 2, the end verses are how Christ yielded himself on the cross, mm -hmm. and likewise ye wise in subjection. It wasn't easy for the Lord to yield himself on the cross again. And that's the way it is with being in subjection your husband. You're what? supposed to be. There are exceptions to the rule, but if you keep doing the exceptions, you'll never do the rule. Did the Lord Jesus obey his father in something the father told him that was sin? No. Any hands? Yes, Barbara? The father couldn't tell him to sin. That's, that's exactly right. So there was not a question. He obeyed the father by doing that which is the father's will. Now, wives, if they obey their husbands to do something contrary to the scripture, that's unchristian. Right. Wives should not obey their husbands when their husband says to do something wrong. It's very important that we get that straight. Uh, but they're to obey their husband and other things that are not on scripture. Yes, okay. So that's an important thing to, to have. Uh, and of course, it's a, yeah, Barbara? In the Garden of Gethsemane, Christ asked that this cup, if it were God's will, to be passed from him. Mm -hmm. Obviously, God said no. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, Christ yielded to that. Right. So there may be, you may have to go to prayer to obey your husband, but then you need to understand it, and then be obedient to him. And, and do it gladly. Even if he says to do something sinful? No, we're not on that. Well, I didn't, well, know. You okay. didn't, qualify, didn't qualify yourself. I, I understand that. Okay. My, my bad. Okay. But as long as... Well, that's why I said in the Lord. As long as it's scriptural. It's scriptural. That's right. That's good. Okay. Good comment. All right. So that's very important. It's just like the, the citizens uh, of Rome were to obey the laws of Rome when the laws are what? Right or wrong? Biblical or not, yeah, when they're right, biblically right, obey the. But the government, uh, for instance, right now, and that's where we had the battle several weeks ago with someone in this room. Uh, the government uh, says it's all right to kill babies. So we kill babies because the government says it's all right. <coughs> we don't want to murder anybody. That's against the word of God. Yeah, Bob. See this this verse in, in the subjection means that behavior, conduct, manner of life. The whole man 
matter of life for the wife should be that she's a subject to her husband and she's willing to do things that he wants to please. This is, but if you keep making exceptions, you, the wife is never going to be a subjection. And she's never going to have a happy, happy marriage. So we don't have any exceptions on the husband tells her to sin? No, okay. I'm surprised you have the husband's side of this. So I'm not wife, taking the husband's side at all. Sinning. Taking the Bible side. Like, wait, wait, wait. The only exception is when he tells you to do something that is unscriptural. That's the only exception. That's right. Exception. Honey, what's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that? I don't know. I can't remember what I can't remember, okay? I can't remember anything. Let me just make it clear. It says, wives, obey your husbands. As long as the husband doesn't say to tell the wife to do something contrary right. to the word of God. Right. So it's always, it's, it's obey. There's no... They don't say too many exceptions. The only exception is one. Just one. What's the one exception, class? Unscriptural. Something that's unscriptural, something that's un against the Bible, a wife does not obey her husband. Tammy? What if they forbid you from doing something that is right? Well, that's again, that's again. We ought to try to do what's right. right. It's a different yeah. sense. Of different it's sense. Not, it's, not, it's not a command that you're and not it's telling. Right. It's, it's um, well, I guess it, it, it's yeah, and sometimes that is the case. Sometimes the husband doesn't want the wife to go to church for exactly. Doesn't want to pray. Doesn't want to read their Bible. See, that's a serious situation. A wife is shut up to that husband, and of course the question is, uh, is the husband saved or lost? See, is the wife saved? If the wife is saved before they're married, they want to save one of them saved. But if they're both Christians, somebody ought to get to the husband and tell him, you don't know, forbid your wife to do what God tells them to do. And bond and bill. Well, it says, that, uh, if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wife. Uh, I don't get it, obey not the word. I don't get that right. The, word, the, the spoken word, yes. But by, by how the wife acts, because when the Lord the yes. husband to the Lord. That's true. That's and, true. And I know from teaching husband love lessons, I was thinking about this this morning when I go to sleep. I. It's, it's a wonder if you do what the Bible says. I've seen marriages change just because of the Bible, not because of me, but because of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we were, I've been to two in the recent past, two women, they said, I want you to meet my husband, honey. This is a woman that saved my, our marriage. Mm -hmm. and, and a couple of people like that. And I that's good. I'm glad you have biblical wives. That's frankly. I did nothing but teach them here. That's, I, that's all right. I, but I hope you didn't tell them to obey your husband when he tells you something unscriptural. No, no. Well, good. I'm glad you didn't not, tell them that. That's not right, the rule. The rule no, is But okay. you said that's an exception. It's a big exception that okay. has to be done. Now, Bill and then Tim. Uh, I think we touched on this subject a minute ago that uh, if the husband said uh, that you don't, he doesn't want you to go to church, or to read the Bible at a particular time, then uh, that would indicate that he, he's not walking in the Spirit That's right. at that time. That's right. And uh, uh, I think you know the wife uh, should point that out to him uh, as a reminder that he should uh, uh, should uh, uh, read the Bible. Would he like it if she points it out to him? Uh, he, well, most people are embarrassed. Uh, when people point out things to yeah. you. Uh, I, but uh, that's for his own good, though. If, is, Barbara? There's ways to tell people. You don't take a baseball bat and hit him on the head and say, you no. should be reading your Bible. No. There are ways to go about it that are very loving and very, uh, you know, I'm really concerned sort of thing, and mm -hmm. this is scriptural and whatever that you approach them with. It's, it's not combative. It's, it's very important that we have biblical, save, born again Christians, marrying Christians, if they fail to do that, boy, there's a lot of trouble. If the husband's unsaved, he'll tell you all kinds of things. Well, related to, you know, if the husband said, you can't go to church, mm -hmm. you know, we were talking about, um, it's not like that. You know, if you don't have to be obedient to him, and you don't have to be obedient to him, and you don't have to be obedient to him, and, I mean, there's a way, like Barb says, that you can say, well, this is really important to me, and what can I do for you at another time? Yes. You know, perhaps the, she, she has to understand right. that gives some indication, like Bill said, you know, about mm -hmm. the spiritual, and, you know, because a lot of 
sometimes what happens is when one person is saved and the other one isn't, that when the truth, you know, I mean, they, either, even if they are saved, sometimes the truth, it agitates and it causes problems. It was that way with my parents when they got saved mm-hmm. and I said, I'm going to go to church now. And then, uh, invariably, my mother knew what my intentions were and what my plan was. But she would always get angry. I mean, and she wasn't like forbidding me from going. Mm-hmm. She just said, "Hey, you're going to church now." And then she just get. Did she look like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, sometimes there's not peace. Sometimes yes. and there's there's abrasion because they don't want the gospel. They resist yes. the gospel, and the compromise mm-hmm. to that is only hurting your own self. That's right. And it's it's. Basically, you're, you're falling captive to non-believer. That's good. Faith in heaven, you take part two, you know, anything you want to say? <laughs> Time up. All right, so that's in verse number six. Uh, it's Ab- oh, Abram will faith. We'll start with six. <laughs> Ab- Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters are ye are. Ye are. Uh, now, this, this is an important thing. Uh, the subjection to their husbands in verse 5, <coughs> and then Sarah obeyed. What does it mean, whose daughters she are, if he do well? Ms. Barbara? I'm the daughters of Sarah. All right, in the sense of we should be obedient. Yes, Sarah? Daughters in, in faith. In faith, okay. all right. Daughters in faith. Obedient, Sarah. Obedient here. Not that we're Jews, but in obedience. Yeah, to Barbara, and then fine. It's the continuously calling him Lord. She just didn't do it That's once good. and got over That's with good. it. It was she continually right. calls him Lord. What Lord, Lord in what sense? Well, hands on that? Out. Yes, Barbara? He's had it out. And uh, then? There's a subjection to it mm-hmm. in general. Yes, or and that Lord, meaning, meaning master, respect, in other words, he's, a, he's in charge of that situation. And calling him Lord, whose daughter, in other words, if you do that same thing as, as Sarah did, if you do well, yeah, Bob? If you think what Sarah had to go through, what she had to go through, you know, she went through a lot following Abraham. Mm-hmm. She, she was evidently the Bible says she was in subjection and she yes. gave him respect. And I'm just thinking of marriages that, are, that fall apart. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was thinking about this this morning when I wasn't sleeping, and so that's why I'm all wound up. Yeah. Did you think of this in your sleep? No, I was. Oh, you're I awake. I was sleeping. Um, it's just that the Bible has the key to, have, to help your marriage. Yes, it does. You have to be willing to, to use the key. Mm-hmm. And so many women say, well, we don't do that. We, we don't do that. We're, in a, we're a modern marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't do that. And, and co-parenting and, and all that. I guess there's nothing wrong with co-parenting. But uh, I, I just know someone that's marriage is all broken up. Yeah. She said, we do co-parenting. What does this mean, daughters of sir, if you do well? What do you think that would refer to? Daughters, if you do well. Well, you do it right. Any hands on it? Yeah, Barbara? I was thinking, uh, she said it well, with, you know, if you do what's right, if you do what you're supposed right. to do. Yes, Dan? If you follow uh, uh, Sarah's example <coughs> of obedience to her husband. Mm-hmm. What, what, yeah, Barbara? But if she went along with him when he told us the Egyptian, and I forget there was somebody else, he said, you'd lie and say you're my sister. Yes, she, right. she went along with that. Right. She went along with that. What uh, did Abraham? What did God tell Abraham to do the very first part of his life? It was very, very difficult and strenuous. Any hands on that? One? Was Isaac you mean? No. What is? Any hands on that? One? Yeah, Barbara. To leave, to leave Earth. All right, that's right. Anna and Tam. Okay, Tam. Well, yeah, he was still in her, but he stopped, he stopped in Haran until his yes. father died. That's true, he did. And then he didn't continue on, and, and his father's name, is it Haran or was it Terah? Terah. 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 And his name means delay. Yes. Very interesting. But was it easy to leave the land and go to some other land? No. Land where he knew not, did Sarah follow him? Yeah. Yes, she did. She followed him. Completely different language, different everything. So, uh, as long as you do well, you be like Sarah. Uh, whose daughter you are, uh, and what does this last part of the phrase mean? Not afraid with any amazement. What's that mean? Any hands on that one? Any ideas? Not afraid. Come on, Tanny? Well, if you contradict your husband or you wash your husband, they could be mad at you. They could especially, you know, they could make it very hard for you. What 
this whole thing. And this is, people want to have a good marriage, a good husband. Some, you have to do things scripturally, or else you're never going to get a good marriage. The Lord is not afraid with any amazement. Whatever happens, don't be scared. Okay, tell me in the pressure down. Well, I mean, if you become afraid and then you're not willing to obey because you're right. you're, you're so frightened that you, you can't do anything, mm-hmm. then, then that's what that, it seems like what that's referring right. to. Okay, pressure down. The idea of this is, again, Peter's. Peter's audience, he's using Sarah's example and, and say, you know, even, this is an example, even if Sarah did this, even so you must do this, you know, he said, you start as you are, and then do it without being afraid. Don't be afraid. I mean, Sarah had a lot to be afraid of, but mm-hmm. she still did it, and she, right. she was, our trust, the trust should be in the Lord and not in man, so they were doing it without fear. That's good. So she was not amazed about it, she just <coughs> didn't afraid to do it regardless. Yes, Jeff. Barbara? If you are working very hard on a scriptural marriage and your husband is the final authority, he, he runs the household, then regardless of what decision he makes, whether you might agree with it or not, you're, like Daniel said, your trust is in the Lord, that the Lord's going to work it out even if you think he's not right and you don't ever get to thumb your nose and say, I told you. But if your trust is in the Lord and you're working hard on a scriptural marriage, then it seems to me that, not that you don't have lessons to learn and everything, but it will, God will make it, you meant it for evil, God meant it for good. It will work out. Mm-hmm. All right, so, you go ahead. so then, yeah, Bob? There's other things connected with being a good wife. And, and, uh, sex and all this thing. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's other things connected and lots of times when a woman won't yield and other things she won't yield of that matter. And that's what that's all of that together makes you a better wife, a good wife and a good marriage. Mm-hmm. And and it just it makes me feel really bad when I see wives bossing their husbands around and do wives or any wives boss their husbands around at all? You see? Yes, we all do. Uh, do the unsaved boss their husbands around unsaved wives? Probably. Are there some Christian wives that boss their husbands around? But we Are there Christian wives also? Yeah. yeah, that's right. They're not they're not perfect. But we have, if we if we get ourselves under what the Bible teaches, eventually, for most part, it works out. What does it mean to boss some around? Either boss the wife or boss the husband. What does bossing mean? What does that mean? Your hands on that one? Good. Right. Barbara and then Anna. Be in charge. Be in charge, Anna. And showing them around with words. Okay. Oh, I like that. That's very good. Very good. Shoving them around with words. Shoving them around with words. That's very good. <coughs> Verbal shoving. All right. Bullying. Bullying, okay. So... <coughs> <laughs> Verse 7, they come to the husbands. What is, what is the likewise there for? Likewise, meaning what? That's yes, Barbara? Well, now yes. the shoe's on the other foot. It has, things haven't changed, but okay. it's for talking to the men. All right, Vaughn? That's what Okay, and the other? All right, I go. Ye husbands. Now, what kind of husbands are there? Who's Paul, who's Peter writing to? Who's Peter writing to? Say, yes, Barbara, believers. Ten, believers, ten. This is likewise, perhaps to refer to verse one, where it says, "Likewise, um, if any obey not the word, they may without the word be won by the conversation." So yes. the idea is, is that maybe if the wife is unsaved. Mm-hmm. And that likewise probably goes back to chapter two, the Lord Jesus right, told us exactly. real. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That word. Uh-huh. So likewise, yeah, Anna. Um, Wait, are we in verse 7? Verse 7, huh? Well, so sometimes the husbands, so some some husbands might say, oh, you, the wife has to obey me, but then they just, they don't give any honor to their wife. And mm-hmm. so that's not right. Right. And um, so it's, <coughs> there's responsibility on both, both um, the husband and the wife in the marriage. Mm-hmm. That's right, Bob. But if I 
No matter how much I would find, you know, try to be a good wife to you and be a subject to and if, it's, and if you get angry with me and stuff, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I still have a duty to do. It's just like a husband has a duty. And if the wife doesn't uh, do what she's supposed to do, he's not supposed to stop loving her because Christ loves the church. Right. And, we're not, and the wives are not supposed to stop being in, in uh, I forget, subjection. 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 Anna. Well, but if a husband is at the point where they're becoming physically abusive of the wife, then, like, the wife, I mean, if, if the husband's not treating, like, if he's being physically abusive to the wife and to the children, then perhaps the wife, I mean, needs to, to leave for the safety of her and her children. Mm -hmm. uh, as we read this morning, in sure. Sharia law, the wives sometimes would be beaten. Is that scriptural to have a husband beat his wife? No. No, it's unscriptural. Never should happen. Never should happen. Now, uh, a husbands, what does it mean, dwell with them according to knowledge? Is it Barbara? Uh, it's an imperative that means be at home with understanding. All right. Uh, this, what does it take to have knowledge of a wife? For a husband, just tell me. Communication, communication, a bit of knowledge of them. How many years do you think it takes for a husband to be really knowledgeable about his wife? Well, the rest of his life. Probably the rest of his life. Sixty-eight years. Sixty-eight years in our case. <laughs> You're finally learning. She's finally learning to about her husband. I'm finally learning about my wife. Sixty-eight years, absolutely. But the drawing with knowledge. You don't always know about a woman if you're just recently married. We were married at age 20 and 21. We didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about her. She didn't know anything about me. It's a living situation. We just, uh, the details of how a husband is, how a wife is, how they act, what they need, their needs, and so on. So, but according to knowledge. So it's, it's good before you start a marriage, have as much knowledge as you can about the intended husband, intended wife. Knowledge should be. <laughs> if you really know too much about it, you never marry him. That's true. And you shouldn't marry him. Yeah, go ahead, Hannah. Oh, just as a clarifying point, you and Grandma had been dating for a, a number of years. Yeah. Well, 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 Four years, three years, four it took four years and three at the University of Michigan. So there were three <coughs> years we knew each other before we married. That's right. Mm -hmm. So uh, the husbands, according to knowledge, now what has this been giving honor unto? Uh, uh, honor which one has by reason of rank or state of office. All right. How do you give somebody honor? <coughs> do you leave your husband, wife, or any just in general? What does that general word mean? Okay. We refer to them and right. yourself. Refer to them, all right. To uh, giving honor to the wife. What's the next phrase mean? That's under the weaker vessel. What does that mean? Does that mean she's inferior because she's weaker? No. Oh, that's that. Well, I mean, it's, when you think of a, uh, a delicate vessel, it's not, it's a vessel that's contained like a very, one of these, Vases up here, and you know, there, there are different kinds, but um, it's it's weak in the sense of it's more delicate. It's breakable. It's breakable. I mean, it could be it could be it's not a clay like, pitcher. You pull some out of the water as a mm -hmm. like one of these delicate uh, glass pitcher, yeah, devices. But it's this is more delicate and more 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 there's more value to more than something like this to a, to a, you know to a cut glass vase or whatever you know one of these. They, whatever you want to describe it, but it's rather than a clay pot. Rather than a clay pot. It's the weaker vessel. Or vessel is the is the is the very expensive and costly base. Should a husband treat his wife as a clay pot? No. No, as a what does it say? A weaker vessel. Does that mean that, we've said that? Does that mean inferior? No. Why? Why not? Yes, Barbara. Because to go back to what this honor means, which is your definition. About one by reason of rank or state of office in the military, 
the lower ranks had to salute the upper ranks. Mm -hmm. They initiate the salute, and the other one salute first. Yes. Yes, okay, that's right. Um, and so if it's a matter of rank, I'm thinking, as I'm understanding, correct me, because he said likewise wives, and now he's saying likewise husbands, the rank is equal, the honor is equal. Mm -hmm. There's no, he's not barking out orders and she's not running around saluting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like the father and the son. It's yeah. not inferiority. The son obeys the father in a subjection while he's here on earth. Whatever that he does want and wills, he does. doesn't mean weakness. In the same way that weaker does not mean inferior in any way, shape, or form. They're equal in, in quality and uh, before the Lord. And that should be, but the order of things, the certain order, and the husband and the wife have order. Yes, Barbara? Because you are both heirs together in the grace of life. That's what makes the equality. Mm -hmm. Weaker vessel. In other words, uh, in the shot put, for example, in the 100-yard dash, <clears throat> in the weightlifting, who's got the world's records, man or woman? Women. Yeah. I'm man. Oh, oh, oh. Where was I? I had a division. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's no division. Uh, you see, we don't want to say that that's terrible to this poor, poor week. That's just the way we're, we're built differently. We're different people. Husbands are different than wives. Wives are different than them. Praise the Lord for it. I wouldn't want to. Like the homosexual. What kind of thing is that? It's horrible. Sinful. Yeah, Anna. But see, the, the women are built for bearing children. Yes. And that's very important because otherwise, without that, then the human race would just can go out of existence. Exactly there right. There are no children. Exactly right. And uh, those homosexual countries, they're, they're losing a lot of, lot of children because they can't make children. That's very true. So, that's what is weaker vessel as being heirs together, the grace of God. <coughs> what is an heir? Anybody have an answer oh, question on that? Answer hand on that? One who inherits something from <coughs> somebody else. All right. Uh, Upon their death. On their death. Ivan has something? I just was looking here. It says inheritors. Okay, those who inherit. When a, a mother or father dies, do the, do the children always get an inheritance? Some do, some don't. Do some get huge inheritance? Others get less than huge? Some don't get any, that's true. But even if the father and mother are paupers, what can they give to the children even while they're still living? Wisdom. Wisdom. What else? Upbringing. Upbringing. And what else? knowledge of the Savior and leading them to Christ and hoping they will trust Him and be saved, they can give them eternal life by faith in Christ. They can have eternal life. And parents can do that. So there is inheritance, no matter whether spiritual or physical. Which is better, do you think? Physical inheritance or spiritual inheritance? Why? Yes, remember? One's temporal, one's eternal. All right. Any other hands? Sounds good to you. Okay. It seems like a fairly easy question to answer. But do some people agree? Absolutely. Do other people in the world, lost people, they think it's better spiritual than physical? <coughs> Those people, they don't believe that there's anything after death, really. So, or if they do, they believe that they're reincarnated or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, is it just... Yes. Yeah. Is that pie in the sky, pie in the sky, pie in the sky? Yes, some people phrase that. And so, if people believe that only the physical is real, not the spiritual, they go for the physical. That means inheritance of the physical, money, whatever, land, houses. But if they believe in the spiritual, eternal life and heaven is possible instead of hell and the lake of fire, they should. Respect the inheritance of spiritual things, inheritance of faith in Christ. Other comments on that verse? All right, so husbands dwell according to that. <coughs> yeah, we didn't finish, I know. Uh, dwell with them, giving honor to the wife, and husbands should give honor to the wife. Weaker vessel, heirs together, the grace of life. Heirs together for the purpose of what? Pastor Dan, and then.
So your prayer is going to be your prayer is going to be a male. Continually cut off. Barbara. Prayer is not be hindered or cut off. That's right. Continually. God continues the hindrance of prayers. And so, uh, do husbands and wives always live in peace? No. Do Christian husbands and wives always live in peace? No. No. There's differences. That's right, Yahweh. I'm just saying, you know, the power of the law of a holy woman or whatever it is. The law of kindness is in her tongue. Yeah, the law of kindness. The honey, the law of, in her tongue is a law of kindness. It's something like that. Yeah, yeah it's, e- it's easy to, to pick on your husband. Mm-hmm. Because he does things. He does things provoking. Sometimes. Yes, it's easy to pick on your wife because she does things yeah, sometimes okay. provoking. That's yeah. right, absolutely. So both are provoking. So it's easy to prove. So we always don't live together in peace and harmony. But <coughs> should you... <coughs> what is the answer? Oh, to me, Well, sometimes it's more of a play, playful teasing. Sometimes, that's right. As opposed to like a, a war, hateful critique. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And when there is difference of opinion and fighting and bickering, husband and wife, wife and husband, what should be the end thereof? Be one mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Barbara? Be all of one mind. One mind, that's Having good. compassion and love. And... Yes. There should be a reconciliation of the both in peace and harmony continued. So there's not a single marriage that I know anything about that doesn't have disagreements and disharmony, disharmony, but get back together in peace and harmony. Go on to get another disharmonious fight. Always try to make <coughs> peace and get back together. That's what you should do as a husband, as a wife. Then uh, that's number number uh, five, number seven, number eight. Why is this finally in here? Ten. Seems like it's not just referring to husbands and wives, but perhaps the whole church. All right, the whole church now, not just <coughs> for some of the people who are not married. You think? Yes. Probably some not married, some are married. So finally, who does who does the ye refer to? Be the ye. Where are you? Verse 8. Okay. Barbara? That's y'all, and it's everybody. All the whole world? Well, no, the people are Christians. The Christians that Peter's writing to, and uh, by by extension to us believers today. Christians, believers, ye, what should they be? Kind. Yeah. Barbara? Hands up. One mind? One mind. What does that mean to be in one mind? Any hands on that one? Yeah, Barbara? I mean... Tammy? United in the Word of God. And That's good. <coughs> um, later on in chapter 4, he says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. And that's where it ends up. Mm-hmm. When your husband or wife in your marriage, and you're not of one mind, the wife has one mind, the husband has another mind. Well, just get one mind. In other words, somehow agree, even though we have to agree to disagree. We come back together in unity. That's what one mind, same mind. Not that you always agree with each other. At least you harmoniously make things right. Patch it up. Are things in there are impossible to patch? Is anything impossible? Yeah, Barbara? Nothing's impossible with God. All right. Any other comments or questions on that no, things should always be patched up. Even serious things. Yeah, but. Yes, having compassion. Sometimes a wife doesn't have compassion <coughs> on her husband. Sometimes he doesn't have compassion on her. What does compassion mean? Sympathy. Any hands on that? Yeah, Barbara? Sympathy. Sympathy? Any Sympathy? other? Understanding. Any other hands on that? Excuse me. Any hands on that one? Ashton, you're asking the question. That's with hands, because we're discussing on see, you know, so we can call on people and not have confusion. Anna? Did we already talk about how it's feeling with or compassion? Oh, compassion. Uh, with feeling. Mm-hmm. See, it's like, it's more just sympathy. <coughs> it's, uh, feeling along with someone else. Is that, is that more empathy? <coughs> 
Compassion would be a little different, but... Again, what does compassion mean? Any hands on that? No hands, okay. Yes, Barbara. Could be sympathy. Could be understanding. Certainly has to do with feeling. Compassion. If somebody's compassionate about someone. Yes, Anne, I mean. The Lord is filled with compassion. He saw the multitudes. The Lord was moved with compassion when he saw the multitudes. He saw the multitudes that were lost and wavered. So, having compassion on one another. Can you help us out with that definition? No. I think feeling along with someone else. Compassion is from feeling with. It's like sympathia. That's feeling with in Greek. And this is feeling with in Latin. So, pasio, that's Latin. And sympathy is Greek. So, it's being of the same feeling. Harmony and feeling. I think that's basically what compassion is. Harmony and feeling. So that you have compassion with her. She has compassion with you. And there's an equalization of that compassion. Having compassion one of another. The wife should have compassion on her husband. The husband should have compassion on the wife. One of another. So, yes. So, then what would the difference between feeling and empathy be? Empathy would be feeling with someone. Empathy is to feel with someone. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Y
with the one mind, that would go together. Because if we're all to be of one mind, then we are to be to love each other with this sympathy and with this tenderheartedness. And that's how we're supposed to treat our God's family. The as, what did the Lord Jesus say about the way that the brethren should treat one another? What does it say? Can you hands on that? What's the Lord say about how the Christians should treat one another? Lord Jesus, yes. Pardon? Love one another as I have loved you. That's exactly right. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you <coughs> love one to another. That's as. That's what that as means. Just the same as the brethren, the saved Christians, the wife and the husband should be. That, that's right. And what's this next phrase mean? Be pitiful. Barbara? Tenderhearted. Could be. Merciful. It's not the same as spitiful, is it? Spitiful? Spitiful. 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 You don't spit at one another, or spiteful, either one. Have pity. Full of pity is the English English word. Uh, What would be a person that has pity on someone else and somebody would be not pitiful? What would be the difference? Give me an illustration. Good Samaritan. The Levi and the priest walk by him and walk by him, but the Samaritan didn't. All right. But some people say that when you are at a gathering, you sort of agree on something. They call that gathering a pity party. A pity party. What are they talking about? They're talking about themselves. All right, but what do they mean? Pity party. If God. And then Barbara. Well, it's like if you lose a game or you lose a match, you something, uh, you have a gathering. Yeah. You're saying, oh, woe is us. Everything's falling apart. Yes. That's a pity party. It's not, it's not being pitiful. It's a pity party. Okay, you have Barbara. I was going to say, woe is me. Woe is me. Okay. So be pitiful. In other words, have pity upon one another, whatever it be. <coughs> Then uh, also, what's that last word mean? Courteous. Courteous. What does courteous mean? Hey, Barbara? Friendly and kind. Friendly and kind. <clears throat> Sometimes are unbelievers discourteous? Yes, are believers. Sometimes are believers discourteous? Yes. Yes. But this is a condition with all believers, not just husbands and wives. Of course, husbands and wives fit into this, but be courteous. Sometimes when we speak strongly, uh, the other person listening to the strength sometimes believes that's not being courteous. And so there's a way of interpreting somebody's words as being discourteous, but they may be courteous, but it's, it's very important that we be courteous one to another. Any other questions on verse number 8? Right, then, we read, did we read 9? Did we read 9 yet? Not yet. But let's see, we, we, we started with six, seven, and eight. We had now, okay, now let's read nine, ten, and eleven. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, and contrariwise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Right. That's right. So verse number nine. What is it rendering? What does rendering mean? Any comments on that? Question or hands on that? If I would mean the uh, Tammy? Returning. Right. Returning, rendering. Faith has something in that? No, Mrs. Wade's phone just talked. Oh. When we were in verse, it just oh, spoke the, up and talked. The phone talked. My, that's strange. Not rendering. Rendering. Give me back. Give me back. Give me back. <coughs> evil for evil. What's that mean? Yeah, that's your name. Something that's rendering would have to do with uh, payment or wages. That's good. Yes. Uh, what should we not render in verse number nine? You shouldn't be mad. Any hands on that? What should we not render? No hands? Yeah, Tammy and then Ellen. Evil Barbie. Evil. Not evil for evil. What does that mean, not rendering evil for evil? Give an illustration. 
Anybody else read that? Barbara? Little kids back each other. Yeah, back and forth. Yeah. In other words, if evil comes, don't give evil back. Uh, now, the Lord Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew illustrated this at some points, did he not? He said, uh, when somebody steals your cloak, give me, give me cloak. See, in other words, it's, it's being kind. I realize that's in the gospel for everything, but the, that's not rendering evil for you. If somebody smacks you, don't smack them back. See, that's it. Overcome evil, but overcome evil with good. Not rendering evil for you. Oh, that's Romans 12. Uh, or railing for railing. What is railing? I mean, can I? Strong rebuke, okay. Somebody rails at somebody. Usually there's a lot of yelling and screaming usually and uh, uh, very strong either rebuke or saying something contrary. When somebody rails at you, don't rail back on it. That's it. Just be careful. Contrary is what? Oh, excuse me. Fine. This verse is, this is still talking about marriage. Well, no, we said it was a, likewise verse 7. I mean, excuse me, verse 8, finally. It sort of gives the whole Christian community, all the saved genuine Christians. But it, it applies to husband and wife. Yes, they're part of the Christian. Pardon me? Does it save your life? No, it makes me not be able to talk. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's bad. Well, there's a lot of railing in marriages, railing back and forth. Oh, yes. And somebody don't have a rail, we have to get another rail. Yes, sir. Barbara, then Pastor Dan. My thought was he, he specifically spoke to husbands <coughs> and wives about how they are to treat each other. Yeah. But in ge- this is general Christian conduct, yes. but it would also include husbands. Oh, wives. absolutely. They're part of the Christian conduct. Yeah. Pastor Dan. In the same word um, for railing here in 1 Peter 3 9, uh, is it used as reproachfully in 1 Timothy 5 14. I will therefore, younger women, bear children, have a house, give another case to the adversary. Speak reproachfully. Same Greek word, huh? Yeah. Speak reproachfully. I rail about something. Okay. So, say I'm one rail, I'll get them on another rail. But don't rail back and forth. Okay, that's good. Uh, but rather what? Blessings. All right? The blessings. The running for any blessings. And notice, what is this calling mentioned in verse 9? You're called. What? What it means there and to? Tammy? We're called to give others a blessing. All right. What does it mean there and to when you're called? Called in what sense? What is it called? Yeah. Verse number 9. Tammy? Well, that's part of the gospel. The gospel is a blessing mm-hmm. for those that will receive it. So those that are called, others have accepted the call of the Lord and trust in Christ as their Savior, they're gender Christians, that you should inherit a blessing. What blessing will all genuine Christians <coughs> inherit? Eternal life, heaven, eternal blessing. So that's the way the Christians should behave themselves in verse number 9. Then verse number 10, uh, he that will love life. What does it mean to love life? And do you love life? Any hands on that one? Maybe Evan does. Do you love life, Evan? That means life being alive. Oh, go ahead. That means life being alive. Probably. Being well. Any other thoughts, Tammy? Well, enjoying your life. Probably enjoying it, loving it. That's right. That you love life. In other words, you're glad you're alive. Uh, do all people love their lives? And some people are some people leading lives that they shouldn't love. So you better believe it. The incidents of narcotics and all this thing is just rising, rising, rising in this country because the doctor prescribed these kind of pills and it's a whole thing. You hear it about the, on, the, on the TV all the time. Increasing in, in deaths because of this. It's the overdose of heroin all these other things. Just prescribed first of all by doctors and then just get going and going and going. And uh, they don't love life. They love the, the poison pills that keep, makes them high and then Sometimes they just want to kill themselves. They don't. They do. Neither will love life. Now, does every even every genuine Christian 
always love every day of their lives. You know, some are very hard to love, hard lives, hard incidents that happen in life. Am I right? Deaths and different things. There, faith had uh, death of her mother. Different things. There's some days that are harder to love than others. That's what I'm saying. But uh, in general, if we love life, uh, those people that don't love life, I just ask, what did they do to their life? Any hands on that? Could evil? What else? Yes, Dad. They could destroy their lives. They could destroy their lives. Throw on any more. Let me out of here. Kill themselves. Uh, it's, it's a horrible situation. But suicides are also all too prevalent. All too prevalent. If they love life, what then should happen? And see good days. What is the best thing? Go ahead. Ultimately, you look at the whole verse, and so if you love life, see good days, but you need to refrain your mouth from evil, your lips from evil. All right. Because you won't love too much life if you speak with your tongue evil upon evil upon evil and guile and guile and guile. That's true. Uh, what is the evil? Can, how can tongue speak evil? Refrain his tongue. I mean, what are some of the evil tongue situations that you can refresh our minds on? Any hands on that one? Huh? And angry, you might say a lot of things you shouldn't have said. A lot of things? That's an evil tongue, the evil that way, and anger? Any other things? Other thoughts? Yes. Helen? Helen, go ahead. Some people are just plain miserable and they can't yeah. say one good word about me. Yeah, he was right. That's right. Where did they learn misery? <coughs> the devil, that's right. Could be from their own flesh, could be from their parents or friends or relatives or brothers or sisters. But he that will love your life, let him refrain. What does refrain mean? Stop. Stop. Take it out. Just don't do it. The tongue. <coughs> Is it easy to keep our tongues in line? Is it easy? No. no it's, not, it's not always easy because uh, some people go run away, run away they, with their mouth. They run away with their mouth and with their tongue. They just talk, 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 and it's just, it gets honor. Doesn't James, <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, James talk about uh, the tongue? You know, you can bridle a horse, but you oh, yes. um, no man can talk, tame the tongue. Deceive with his own heart, doesn't religion is vain. Yeah, and he, um, you can't, but you can't tame the tongue. Well, no man can tame, but God can tame. Right. No man, that's right. Tame. Out of that same fountain, blessing and cursing. That's right, blessing and cursing. So be careful of our tongues. Uh, you've heard of a wagging tongue, but it's a tongue that speaks evil. His lips, they speak no God. What is guile? Any hands on the other hand? Deceit. Deceit and truth. Dolos. It's almost the same as Dolos. It's uh, covering up some like hypocrisy and deceitfulness. Somebody says, do this, and it's a wonderful thing, but they're, they're slippery. They don't really mean that. They're, slip, they're hitting, hitting some, they're hiding some things. Mm -hmm. And guile. Did the Lord Jesus ever have any guile? No. It says right there in the scripture, who had no guile. Whose tongue, no guile in his mouth was found, and we should not have guile. Be honest, be slip, not slippery, but straightforward. Now, we read 11, I think, didn't we? Mm -hmm. What is the command, negative command here? What does this chew mean? Uh, Ella, Barbara? Turn away from. Turn away from. Let's pursue it. Oh. No, pursue and follow. That's, that's in Sue. Oh. We're talking about his chew. What did, what did Job do with the <coughs> He has chewed evil. Now, I think in that Old Testament thing, he, he got away from it. I think he just ran from it. I think that's the view of that. Uh, uh, certainly hatred too, but his chew, I believe, run away from it, but also hated. It's something you hate to try to run away from. It's chew evil. And what else instead of this, uh, this chew evil? What else should be done? If, Seek peace. That's good. She spoke. He spoke. Good. Without a hand. We try to hear it happen. Without a hand. I heard her. That's good. Sorry. <laughs> hand, no, that's all right. No problem. It's easier that way. Call you once. There are five hands. Got more. That's all right. It's okay. She's new to our afternoon classes. So that's fine. I understand. So, uh, what do you do then? That you, Job has chewed evil. He has chewed evil. I think he, he got away from it and left it. What else is the opposite of that in this verse that we should do instead? Do good. Do good. How do you define good? 
That's Tammy? Standards of the Bible. Standards of the Bible. Does everybody in this world agree with the same one is good and what is bad? No, there's lots of different, different definitions of good. If you don't have the biblical standards, you're way off. Some people say killing babies is good, but the Bible says no. Thou shalt not kill. Yeah, this is this is not an either or situation. This is both of them. You are to eschew the evil and you are to do the good. That's right. Exactly right. So if you turn away from and go away from the evil, mm-hmm. then you should turn to and do the good. That's exactly right. As the Corinthians or Thessalonians, I believe, is chapter one, they did two things. What did they do first? That's the name. Turn to God. To God. <coughs> From idols. First is first. Most important. Turn to God. Salvation. Then you do good works. People <laughs> refrain from idols and bad works. That's not going to save them. To God from idols. So this is it. Both things. It's true evil and do that which is good. Uh, that's We, we didn't... Uh, there was, and see, what else would you seek here? What should we seek, seek? What else should we do in verse uh, 11? Follow it. Follow it. Well, what should we seek first? Oh, faith, faith, oh. Who? Seek peace. Who, who mentioned it? Yeah, faith. Yeah, faith. Yeah, right. faith. Seek peace. That's right. Seek peace. What does ensue mean again? Pursue. Pursue. Follow. Follow peace. Faith. There's the this. The Barbara. And in the English, all this is in the imperative. Good. Imperative, something to do positively. It's, a, it's an order. It's an order. That's yes, absolutely right. Yeah. <coughs> Seek peace. And you should follow it. Um, how would you define peace? How would you define peace? Yes. Okay. Absence of war. Absence of war. That's one good thing. Mm-hmm. Did you have something? I can't think of anything right now. Oh, the peace, all right. <coughs> The Lord says there's a peace that passeth all understanding. That's, that's the Lord's peace. The Lord's peace. peace I give you, not as the world gives God. Let not your heart be troubled. That's the Lord's peace. What is that? Close. Go ahead. Finish it. Neither let it be free. Neither let it be free. Okay, yes. Barbara? It's not just the absence of war. It's the addition of God gives the peace. Yes. It's nothing I can go get. That's right. Yeah, but it fills the void. Fills the void, yeah, huh? Peace is the opposite of turmoil. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. We have all kinds of turmoil. Question that. It's a certain tranquilness of the soul. That's good. Tranquilness of the soul. That's perfect. And quietness and confidence. Quietness and confidence. That's right. Isaiah. Confidence, quietness, that's what that's peace. Did Annie, Annie had something? No. She's going to check that. Oh, okay, that's good. <clears throat> so then, do we read number 12 yet? Yeah. We did read 12. Okay. Uh, let's read, let's look at it. The eyes of the Lord are over, over right now. What part of speech? And the, the idea of the eyes of the Lord. What part of the reference to that? Does the Lord literally have eyes? Uh, what is that called in, as a part of speech? He sees. Well, he sees. Oh, yeah. So we can understand it. See? Anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism. All right? Anthropomorphism. In other words, man's feelings. For shape, excuse me. The shape. The form. See, we have eyes, we have eyes. What about if he loves? What is that called? God's love. Anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism. The feelings of of people. Anthropomorphism. Man. Feelings. Anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism. The forms of man. The Lord said he has hands, he has eyes, you know. That's anthropomorphism. But he feels, he senses, he hates evil, he loves the good. The feelings of people. Anthropomorphism. That's a big word for these words. So, what about the eyes of the Lord here? What are they over? Over the righteous. Over the righteous. That's what sense? What do you think the idea is that these hands are over the righteous? Well, the eyes are over the righteous? Eyes, huh? What, in the, what sense? What, 
does that mean in his tank? Tam? He knows what we're doing. He knows what, right. what we're feeling. Okay. It's over there. In other words, he knows exactly. His, his eyes can see. <laughs> can anybody else in this human being see one another? We can't see one another? We can't Outside. See can we see our hearts? No. We can't see, see the inside. Exactly right. That's right. Good. The, the priest, when Israel went out, uh, related to the priest said the eyes of God do not behold us. They, they literally believe that God didn't see anything they were doing with the idols. That's why the sinners in the Old Testament always did things at night. At night when it was dark, I don't believe it's seen. Well, she's through the dark. He's got vision, night vision, and day vision both it doesn't. Uh, the eyes of God are over the righteous. In other words, in what sense of over do you think? Yes. Barber, banana, tan. I think of He's watching out for me. Is All right. He's over me. He's watching out. All right. Anna? Are the nighttime criminals, are they trying to hide from God or are they trying to hide from men? Try to hide from men. Can they ever hide from God? No. No. Impossible. Damn. They're no. over in the sense of being, he's over in the sense of being sovereign. Sovereign. That's right. In control. That's right. We're going to stop right here, but do you have any comments on this? We're going to stop at verse 12. Pick up 12 again. Or go to next one. Yeah, Bob, go ahead. He says in the footnote that over means upon. Upon, upon evil, upon. That's right, that's good. Upon, he looks upon us, he knows what the, what the righteous are. Any other comments or question on these? Pastor Dan, you got to say that? No. All right, uh, no more comments? Let's close with a word of prayer. We thank you, Father, for these words from Peter. Thank you that we can discuss them and look at them. We pray, Lord, that thou us give those of us who are genuine Christians the ability to follow thy words in this passage. Thank you for the discussion we've had. Guide us and direct us. Bring us back um, for the prayer meeting time on Thursday and uh, next Lord's Day. And may our, our hearts be with thee, with thy word of obedience. Those of us who are genuinely saved, our Savior should mean all to us, not simply a job, not simply money or food or housing. That may be all taken away from us one of these days. If the government swerves, thou wilt keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right, Thursday. Oh yes, Thursday is the Bible class. Pastor Dan, Thursday class at 3 o'clock.